Welcome to the NGIT website and math podcast. My name is Vanessa, and today I'll be covering Pythagorean theorem and its converse. So, what does the Pythagorean theorem actually state? It basically just makes a fact about the characteristics, the special characteristics of the right triangle. A right triangle is obviously a triangle that contains a right angle or a 90 degree angle within it. And the longest side, or the, the side opposite that 90 degree angle, is what's called the hypotenuse. So, if we were to draw out a right triangle, if you have a right angle here, or this is our 90 degree angle, the, op the side opposite that right angle is what's called the hypotenuse. And the other two sides, which are uh, away from the hypotenuse, are called the legs. So it's this one and this one, and they're both called legs. Now, what the Pythagorean theorem states about the characteristics of bringing all these together is saying that the if you were to square the length of the hypotenuse, it's going to be equal to the sum of the square of both the legs. So to put that in a equation type of form is if we were to call the legs a and b and and call the hypot and give the length of the hypotenuse c, it's basically saying that the if the square of both the legs, the sum of the square of both the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And that's what the Pythagorean theorem and equation try to tell you. So if we try to do an example based on this theorem, so say if, if, if an, a problem tells us that we have a right triangle that has legs of length 3 and 4, find the hypotenuse. So if we were to rewrite our Pythagorean theorem equation, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, and the problem tells us that we have leg two legs of length 3 and 4, we want to fill in a and b with 3 and 4, because those, the a and b are the variables that represent the legs. So if we have 3 squared plus 4 squared, is equal to c squared. And then we'll just solve for c. So 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, equal to c squared. 9 plus 16 is 25, is equal to c squared. And then we take the square root of both sides to get rid of the squared, and we get 5. Now keep in mind though that Technically, when you do take the square root of a number, you get both positive and negative, but because we're talking about the lengths of a triangle, we can only have a positive length, which is why I just stuck with positive 5 as my answer. So, that was that. Now, let's just try a different example. Say if the problem said that one of the lengths was 15th of a leg, and the hypotenuse is 39 and then they ask you to find the length of the second leg. So again, let's rewrite our equation. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now they're telling us one of the legs is 15, so let me just pick, I'll pick b as, her, as that leg. So 15 squared, and they're telling us the hypotenuse is 39. The length of the hypotenuse is 39. So let's put that in here. So C is our hypotenuse, so 39 squared. And they want us to find what the other leg is, so our variable in this case is A. So let's solve it. So we have A squared plus 15 squared, which is 
225 and that's equal to 39 squared which is um feel free to use your calculator if you can't do you know 39 squared in your head not too many people can but 39 times 39 if you were to do it in your calculator it would be 1521 so then you just have to subtract 225 okay and then if you were to subtract both sides here it cancels and then you're left with a squared is equal to 1521 minus 225 which is 1296 and then take the square root of both sides and then you're left with a equal to 36 and that would be the answer for that now one more important concept with the Pythagorean theorem is what they call the converse which is the same exact equation, just because it just make it just proves a point. So if you take your Pythagorean theorem equation and just flip it around, you get c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Now what this tries to emphasize is that the longest side of the longest of the three sides is the hypotenuse, and what it says is that if your long the square of your longest side is equal to the sum of the squares of your other two sides, then that is what constitutes a right triangle. So let me explain that with an example. So say you have a problem which says that you have three sides. It doesn't even specify any of the sides. They just give you the sides 20, 21, and 29. Okay. Those are the lengths of the triangle. And they're asking, is this triangle a right triangle? So what constitutes a right triangle is, okay, we would take the longest side and the two other sides and we'll apply to the Pythagorean theorem. So first things first, because it deals with the squares, let's uh, do the squares first to save ourselves some time. So 20 squared is 400. 21 squared is 441 and then 29 squared is 841 okay so now the Pythagorean theorem you take the longest side which is obviously the 29 squared that would be 841 that would be c squared okay is equal to the sum of the squares of, of the other two sides. So that would be the 20 square, which is 400, and the other side, which is the 21 square, is 441. Okay. Now if we add 400 plus 441, we get 841, which happens to be what's on the left side. So because this equation works out, that means that this these sides represent the sides of a right triangle. And that's all the converse of the Pythagorean theorem is trying to illustrate is that if you're given the sides um, and they're asking you if it is a right triangle, all you have to do is apply the theorem and if the equation holds to be true, then yes, you do have a right triangle. So thank you for visiting the NGIT website. If you, need any, if you need any further assistance, please feel free to stop by the CAPE or the Center for Academic and Professional Enrichment located in Kufrin Hall, room 200. Good luck in your studies.